All right, continuing with our assignment three. We're going to go right to assignments, to shortcut, right to where we post it. Scroll down to assignment three. And I'm going to show you a digital honors mentorship presentation on this. This is how to do GIF animation using Photopea, the freeware clone that we use sometimes of Photoshop. And it gives you just a quick introduction to it. Now, Photop is a raster program. You're able to create and control pixels of any dimension, right? Any kind of pixel space you want. You set up your image size. And then you can control those pixels, make them anything you want, including compositing. What Photop does not have is a really useful timeline tool. It actually does have it. If you research hard enough, you can code within Photop and get it to play certain layers at certain timings. But it's, it's way more computer science-y than I want to get in this intro digital art class. So instead, we're going to use Photop to make all of our pixels. And then we're going to, if we wanted to do it outside of Photoshop, right? And then we use this site, which is a really basic site, to load our different frames. And then we set the timing and the playback on that to create our GIF. So it's a combination between the two. We're going to use a, um, a pretty low resolution for this project. And that's because animations cannot be printed. It doesn't make sense to print an animation, right? The same way you would print a poster or print a campaign. Instead, animations need to be shown on a screen or projected because it needs to be time-based. It means you as the creator need to control the timing of the images. So screen resolution is a perfect use for this. We're going to go a little bit higher than standard minimum screen resolution just in case. So we're going to do 8 by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch for ours. And so when we create that new folder, what you've created is the stage. You have created the place where you will build your, your frames. And what they did is they just drew their nine frame storyboard here. My only problem with this nine frame storyboard is that it doesn't have any gutters between it. And gutters are really helpful, the empty space around, to make little notes about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to establish. Now, they're showing you how you could take, and this could be a good exercise for you if you want to practice these animation skills with freeware, you can take your sketch and you can turn it into an animatic. So how would you take each of these and turn them into their own frame? So you would duplicate it, put it onto its own layer, expand it to fill the 8 by 8 inch space, and then you save all of those. They kind of skip a lot, but they've created nine frames here as layers and then they save them all as jpegs and then they name them one through nine make sure they're organized and then they bring them into this program gif maker which is what i'll be demoing in the afternoon and then you simply take those frames in the order you want and you set the timing for each one so it's just physically like a flip book how long do you want to be looking at each image before it changes to the next image. And you, you measure it in milliseconds. These are all fractions of a second, right? And then you output it, and this is the animatic you get. This is at 1,500 milliseconds, which is basically a second and a half per frame, which is pretty slow, right? But if the animatic makes sense, and you see the transformation happening with this big, you know, special effect blast from his hand. He hits something, and then he decides to just blast it, right? Uh, then you can start going into in-betweens between those keyframes and creating more smoother movement between each of the important story elements. And so eventually it becomes this. So you build up, and this animation is more at like 0.3 seconds, so about 300 milliseconds. 
per frame. And you can see there's a lot more frames. <laughs> that, that gives you about 30 or 40 frames for the nine that tell the original story. Now this is called an animatic. This step in animation is called a pencil test. It's still mostly keyframes. And then what happens with the pencil test, most commonly in America, is it gets sent off to South Korea for all the in-betweens to get made. And then enough in-betweens get made between your pencil test frames that you have 24 frames per second by the time it's, it's finished. And you get smooth animation, usually for TV, for advertising, for animated sequence and feature films. The only companies that keep all their animation in-house are the feature animation companies like Walt Disney or DreamWorks or Pixar. All right. And of course, digital is the perfect tool for making these animations because digital is the only kind of visual art form that allows you to make perfect copies. And in animation, you do a lot of copying of what you just made, but then make a slight tweak. A lot of copying of what you made with a slight tweak. So when you think of your storyboard, you're thinking of a character, you're thinking of a setting, and then you're going to be thinking today about how do you set up that character so that you can move it in the way you want or have it transform in the way you want. You might have multiple characters. So it all starts with our sketch. So if we go to the assignment, We see all these different transformations here. We need to feature a transformation, and we don't want it to be subtle. We don't want it to be like a little corner that blinks in and out. We want to really be able to follow and tell in the frames what's happening. So our first step is our rough storyboard. And we need these three things for story, right? Character, setting, and the illusion of time passing. And your requirement is to use one component that you've already designed as some asset in your animation, but you're allowed to add any additional assets you like. So for mine, this is what I demoed in the last video, I am going to use my setting and my character. So I'm using two things that I've designed previously. I might add some new things in there, we'll see, but my main story is something I need to understand from my frames. It's that my setting is going to be rained on by little images of my character dropping from above. My character is going to hit the background and knock them out. It feels like it's like a pachinko game or something, or like nine pin bowling or something, right? Think of the real world equivalent, because that's going to help you understand the timing you want to get the illusion. And it's going to keep knocking out these different features in the middle ground and the foreground until at the very end, it's completely bare. So all that will remain is the furthest background. And then those things will regrow back to set back for the beginning, and then it will all start again. So that's called setting to reset. You are not required to have this loop in a, in a seamless way. That's called setting to reset so that you can play it endlessly and you never can really tell where the beginning and the end is because there's no jump cut. But it's a nice thing to be able to do, to make it seamless. Because these animations will be pretty short, even if you do like 50 frames. Okay, so let's take our sketch. I have mine in my newly made assignment three folder. Right, here is my sketch. I'm going to actually just keep it open in preview so I can reference it off in the corner. Why this sketch is so important is because it is our plan. Because without it, if we just build frame by frame, kind of with a vague notion of where we want to take it, we are not going to get anything accomplished within the time we have. So we are going to start by building the assets needed for our keyframes. Within my assignment three folder, I have my rough storyboard sketch. It can be digital, like this. It can be drawn by hand, because I do a lot of little notes on it. To me, drawing by hand is a little bit easier for it. 
And now I'm going to create a new folder here. And this is going to be called Assets. I'll do it all in capitals. And then I'm going to do, draw another folder or make another folder, and I'm going to call it Stage. For the first time, we're going to make one project across two different Photoshop files. One is the Assets file. One is the Stage file. We're going to start by setting up our assets. Our assets are going to be all the different components to our animation. If you think of it like a puppet show, the first component you need if you want a setting other than just blank white, the first component you need is going to be your setting. And maybe you composite your setting from a found image. Maybe you create your own setting. Maybe you draw it. Maybe you build it with vector shapes. My setting is going to come from my assignment two. Nope, assignment one, rather. My fantasy landscape. And I really liked this. This was my resubmitted landscape. But... I'm actually going to use this, my PSD, for my setting. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take this PSD from assignment one, the working file with all the layers. I'm going to hold down option and save it into my assets folder and then immediately rename it. So notice because I held down option, it copied it. It didn't move it. It just made a copy. And now I'm going to change this to assignment three. And I'm going to name it Assets. These are my animation assets. As a PSD file. So all these assets are going to exist in layers. And I'm going to open that up. Now I see my, my first frame here is an establishing shot. An establishing shot gives the viewer the setting. So before any action really happens, they need to be kind of comfortable with what the scene is. The problem is this project needs to be a square format for a lot of different reasons. Animation exists in the format that you're going to play it back at. And we're going to design this for social media. So we're doing a square format, square screen resolution format, ideal for phones, tablets, that kind of thing. So this right now is not a square. The size we want, if you look at the assignment, is, let's see, is going to be 8 by 8 inches, yeah, an 8 inch square at a resolution of, we can go up to 150, because we're using Photoshop. When you're using PhotoP, I recommend 100, or even 72. So we're going to do an 8 inch square at 150 pixels per inch. Now the problem is, if I go to image, image size, my image is not a square. And if I uncheck, or if I check resample, and I take its smallest dimension and turn it to eight, which makes sense, and take my resolution and turn it to 150, I am now at eight by nine, nine and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna take that nine and a half inches and I'm going to use my move tool with my ruler and create a guide that shows me where eight inches is. So this is my stage. And now I'm going to move my components around. This is why it's great to have all these different layers. First, I'm going to move these ones, these background ones, and kind of fit it in to the scene in a way that I think is better. Now, think about all the assets that have already been built if I use my assignment one. This would be what the bare background looks like. And then all of these components are the things that are going to get knocked down by my creature. Does that make sense? So they're like props on a stage. Now, if I like that arrangement, now I can crop it. 